the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race, that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generations, nor by human choice, nor a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, I want to offer everyone a very, very blessed and Merry Christmas. I hope that this is an opportunity for you to experience the amazing, infinite love of God in your life, the radiance of Christ born to us in Bethlehem. Today, we celebrate the gift of God, the great gift of receiving Jesus Christ before Jesus came, we had nothing. But now that Jesus is with us, our sadness is turned into joy, our desperation is turned into hope, sin is turned into grace, death is turned into life. In Jesus, we have everything. We have received the fullness of God's measure of love. I'd like to share a little story. It's sort of a, it's a this is sort of one of those family legends that, uh, it's a true story, but it kind of grows in importance as with the passage of time. It's a little memory from my childhood about uh, Christmas in the Kime family. Well, you know that I'm the youngest of nine kids, and so uh, I suppose just because there was so much activity going around in the Advent season and probably a question of money, uh, my parents told all of us that we would not have a Christmas tree that year because it just was, it was probably out of the, a uh, lot, lot of busyness, I'm sure, but the reason they said is we just don't have the money this year to buy a Christmas tree, so we're not going to have a Christmas tree. 
And it was Christmas Eve, and my father was called out to work in the mill. And, uh, you know, he got, I guess, time and a half or double time working on uh, Christmas Eve. And so he thought, well, with this extra money, we can buy a Christmas tree. So on the way home from work from the, from the mill, he stopped off and bought a Christmas tree. I guess all the regular size Christmas trees were gone by this time. So he bought this enormous, like 12 feet tall Christmas tree. I suppose he imagined just cutting off the bottom in order to fit it into the house. So around four o'clock in the afternoon, I mean, the house is filled with excitement. My dad's walking in the house with this huge Christmas tree and we're all delighted by, we thought we would not have a Christmas tree and here we have a beautiful Christmas tree. Well, uh, at the same time, my grandparents were, li- were visiting us from England for Christmas and uh, they said, this is crazy that our grandkids don't have a Christmas tree. How could they not have a Christmas tree? And so at the same time that my dad was buying a Christmas tree, my grandparents were somewhere else buying a Christmas. So, so they bought this huge Christmas tree and they hauled it into the house and in one moment we have no Christmas trees and then we have two enormous Christmas trees. And you know, if that's not enough, the story actually doesn't end there. There's one more. <laughs> my oldest brother, he's 20 years older than I am, he said, I can't let my little brothers and sisters not have a Christmas tree. So he went to the neighbor's house and cut one down. (laughs) Now, to be fair, our neighbor had 10 acres, so I don't think they missed the the evergreen growing on the back part of there. But you know, in nature, things seem smaller, right? When you're looking at it in the middle of a field, a tree looks smaller than when you bring it into your living room. So my brother brought the largest tree of all, and I'm not kidding, honestly, our house was a veritable forest of evergreens (laughs) on Christmas Eve. There were three trees, they were falling from one room to the other, none of them fit, they were all too... And you know, we just, it's one of these stories in our family that we just laugh about it every year. But to me, it's a fun story, but I believe it manifests something about the symbol of Christmas. Because in one moment we had no Christmas tree, and within a half hour we were inundated with more than we could possibly have handled. That's Christmas, my friends. That's what happens at Christmas. Before Jesus, we had nothing. Now that Christ has come to the world, now that the Word has been made flesh, as we heard in the Gospel of John, now that the Word lives among us in the person of Jesus Christ, We have everything because we have the gift of God himself living in our midst, showing us the way to the Father. Our life in Christ is one of joy. It is one of peace. It is something that this world cannot imagine or ever rob from us. This week on Christian Radio, I listen to Christian Radio a lot. I heard a you know, they were asking, what's the greatest gift that God has given to you? Many, many beautiful answers, right? You can imagine my spouse came up a lot of times, my kids, my grandkids. Wonderful. These are beautiful answers. They're wonderful. But in the end, if we ask the question, what is the greatest gift that God has given us? It's Jesus. Jesus lives among us. That's the greatest gift. It is the very nature of the Father, the substance of the Godhead, the Word made flesh, incarnated among us to redeem us from our sins and give us the promise of life. I think about that first Christmas night sometimes in my mind, and I imagine God the Father looking down upon the world, the globe, and that the world is covered in a cloud of darkness, in a cloud of ignorance, in the reality of sin, in the sorrow of death and then in the midst of that darkness a bright and luminescent light begins to shine in the little town of Bethlehem and that light pierces through the darkness through the clouds passes through the heavens and enters the heart of God the Father and he is moved with joy and delighted by the birth of his son who now is able to scatter the darkness. 
And as each person throughout history comes before that tiny child and kneels before him in adoration, a new light is sparked in the heart of that man and woman. So that the light that Jesus has brought to the world spreads through as many men and women who surrender to the person of Jesus Christ, the baby born in Bethlehem, so that even in this world in which there is sin and darkness and destruction and hatred, it's all here. Nevertheless, in the midst of all that darkness and sin, the light shines. The light of Christ shines brightly, and God the Father can look down upon the world, and he can see the pinpoints of these radiant lights shining through the darkness to the glory of his throne in heaven. Because Christ has come, you, each of you, is one of those lights that scatters the darkness. Yes, sin still exists, even in our own hearts. But you, you are the light of the world. You are the children of God. And you, in Christ, have received everything. The forgiveness of sins, the promise of hope, and the glory of a future in the kingdom of heaven. And my friends, all of this is true because today in Bethlehem, a little child is born for us. And this little child is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who comes to die in order to take away our sins. And so let us rejoice in this great gift of God's love, our Savior born a tiny babe in Bethlehem.